Really quick, I want to thank you all for being here, and I hope you enjoy the video. And while the snow is quite beautiful and shiny, with little frozen crystals cascading to the ground, as trees slumber quietly and the nests they hold are all empty, I find myself longing for the warmth of spring yet again. My face, to feel the glow of the sun behind the winter clouds. An artist's job is sometimes to capture the longing spirit of a person, to remind them of what has existed and what will once again exist when the snow thaws, to show the promising new buds of the blooming spring crocus. In not just its narratives, but also its landscapes and intricate background designs, Studio Ghibli has demonstrated that its creators are of a similar mind being able not only to convey to its audience this message of hopeful renewal, but to remind us of the beauty in the moments we live in. That winter frost does not mean the heart is yet to thaw, and there is always a new adventure to be found if one is willing to seek it out. Hello my little flowers, welcome to the channel, my name is Sunny. So, first of all, let me break down what we're going to be painting in this video. This was a very much anticipated video in which I spent a couple months making, so I hope you enjoy it. As with a lot of my videos, I like to explore the subject in different mediums, just to give it a well-rounded approach and appreciate a new style. Some styles are intrinsic to the materials, like Ghibli, which started out as watercolor and gouache backgrounds and helped me to create an iconic Ghibli style, even when using other techniques. So to honor this approach, I'll begin in watercolor. In order to find scenes that I would say showcase the very essence of a Ghibli background, I must first be present to witness it, of course. Here's a little snippet of my search for inspiration. So, I rented a bike and I'm cruising through the Lincoln Park area, heading for Lake Michigan. Due to the streets having heavy, stressful traffic, me getting lost, and my GoPro not having a lot of battery, I decided to set up my camera a little bit later in the day. Whee! So, I find these types of streets pretty special. Each building is unique and beautiful. Neighborhoods like these can be found all over Chicago and are generally as synonymous with big cities as skyscrapers are. So I just passed the Lincoln Park Zoo and the Bird Conservatory, so now I'm heading to the lake. I'm still looking for the right scenes to paint Ghibli. Since the trees and grass are recovering from winter, there isn't quite as much to see here in terms of foliage, so I'll have to keep looking for more architecture. Oh, and watch this dog bonk its head on a pole. Poor dog. From here, I got off my bike and parked it, then I headed to the lake, which was beautiful. It was getting colder and colder the closer I got to the lake, but the air smelled really nice and fresh. 
I never expected a cloudy day to look so beautiful. Okay, I picked two scenes to paint. Let's get started. Pretend I'm cracking my knuckles. I'm using a small brush with this black pole for more control. If somehow black would escape onto the other colors, it would be disastrous, because of course, this is watercolor. There's a lot of control with this watercolor technique, so I'm making sure to block in base colors carefully. Still struggling to get rid of those pencil marks. So things are looking a little gray and messy. Right now, my colors are getting muddy, and I'm getting off track with the style. I'm going to take some time to watch a few Ghibli tutorials and reapply my colors off camera. I'm much more comfortable with this, but I had to concentrate without worrying about camera shots. I hope you guys don't mind, but I decided to do digital art for this next one. Now, there are a lot of digital techniques associated with Studio Ghibli, but this one is going to involve none of the traditional digital techniques, no multiply layers, none of the really awesome shortcuts that I usually use. Just painting, but as though it were digital. 
So something about Hayao Miyazaki as an artist that spoke to me was his craftsmanship. Something that we have in common, whether you're a furniture builder, a carpenter, a metal worker, a painter, a sculptor, or a writer, would be our intrinsic relationship with craftsmanship. It's a mark of pride for some people, including me. Craftsmanship requires a great amount of dedication, pride in your work, patience with your material, and the ability to let things go even if you spend hours, days, weeks, or months making them. To let things go and make room for something new and better. To practice craftsmanship does not only result in the betterment of the art piece you're crafting, but a betterment in the mentality of yourself. Something that we can all live with is reasonably high standards, self-respect, the ability to self-critique, and the ability to let go of things that are precious in order to move forward. Heck, I discarded four paintings until I started making something that I felt was worthy of a Ghibli imitation. As an inspiring background slash concept artist for big studios, I have to say, Studio Ghibli has been nothing but an inspiration to me. I remember the first time watching a Ghibli movie, which was Howl's Moving Castle. This feeling of, wow, I don't want this movie to end. To enjoy it so much that you're worried about the movie coming to an end? Well, that's filmmaking. Anyway, I'm going to give you the rest of this time lapse. So enjoy watching me paint this. It's important for artists to practice imitating other artists' work, because to do so is to fully appreciate the process, and not just the end result, to get into an artist's mind and wonder what they thought of while they were making this piece of art. And that's why art students do it all the time. The experience has taught me a lot about sourcing my inspiration, and also quite a lot about work ethic seeing as it's three days overdue because of my midterms. The importance of living in the moment cannot be stressed enough, for just as much as it's near impossible to make an informed decision in the present without historical insight, it is also equally as impossible to look towards the future with any foresight if you ignore today. Thank you guys for watching. I have some bonus content for you all. So as some of you know who follow me on Instagram, I planted my first sunflower of the year. Her name is Sprout. In my new videos, we're going to be looking at some updates on her growth. And by the way, while I was making this painting, one of the first things that I did was plant her. Well, um, it turns out that within a week, she has already grown really big. Here's a picture of her today. So if you want to catch up on updates on Sprout's progress, you can follow me on Instagram, like I said, and I will be posting um, bonus content of her in every video.
thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Like, I really do. You guys have, well, sprouted out um, as a community recently, and I'm so glad you're here with me to grow. Question of the day, if you're still here, what's your favorite color? And if you could wear that color on a bow tie, would you? It's a fucking, it's a, that's a weird question. I don't know, I just came up with it. Anyway, <laughs> thank you all. Goodbye. So, first of all, let me break down what we're going to be painting in this video. As with a- Oh, this fucking train, I swear to god. Let's redo this. We're gonna redo this. This is a redo.